Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Faisal Mutar, uh, originally from Iraq and the founder of Ideas Beyond Borders. I think I have a presentation, but actually one thing, uh, Jenny, you mentioned about the context, how is it different in Iraq than Scandinavia? And, and I think the example I would mention is really the last two decades within Iraq, uh, in, especially on the uh, subject of information, is that we moved from controlled information space in which the regime, Saddam Hussein, we had two state televisions in which that's where the truth were, were being told. Uh, on a personal note, I didn't know Iraq invaded Kuwait until 2005 because the information that we were taught from elementary school and, and from the state television was obviously alternative uh, reality. But what was happened interesting in 2003 after the, 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 the Iraq war is that we moved from two state run television into a thousand television station and radios and newspapers. So we, we moved from controlled environment of information to absolutely democratized, decentralized uh, source of information in which it reached a level uh, in which there is barely any agreement of what the facts are. If you go from central Baghdad to West Baghdad and you see that people receive their information from completely different sources, completely different uh, in which the agreement on on what, what's, what's real start being eroded more and more. Um, so that with that motivation, uh, with that kind of ecosystem that I grew up in, uh, it led to the inspiration of creation, creation of my organization, Ideas Beyond Borders, uh, in which tackles a very specific issue, uh, which is it's not only there is very little content in Arabic, and that's a language spoken um, by, by a significant amount of the population, but also the, the lack of factual contents. Uh, in Arabic. So uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, you see that our mission is to provide a positive alternative uh, to extremism, propaganda, and censorship. And, uh, and our main job is to create content that didn't previously exist and, and the aim of fostering critical thinking, uh, civil rights, and, and pluralism, and more. And our lefty goal, our uh, large goal is to, ideally, if we create a condition in which there is, in which these things are celebrated but also known uh, by the majority of people and adhere to, uh, then that would lead to create a more modern and pluralistic Middle East. Um, on the next slide is, is the kind of that's from the Arab Development Report of the, our target audience uh, is really the youth. So that's people from the uh, under the age of 30 who make up uh, the Middle East is considered one of the most youngest regions in the world with a significant amount of young people and, and the according to the Arab Development Report, is that we have a, a very significant smartphone penetration, so many people are constantly connected, uh, but many also the, most of the surveys show that there is a lot of hopelessness and frustration. There was a recent survey that, that was done in Morocco on many of the youth, and the first thing that was, they, they demanded is that they can get immigration papers to leave Morocco and move to Europe. So the, the feeling of frustration, the feeling of of hunger for alternative idea because people are seeing what is not working, create an ecosystem in which people are desperately looking for change. And as a result, that creates a fertile crescent, uh, the, the fertile crescent of misinformation and, and propaganda exists that try to capture that frustration and capture that anger. Um, so on, on the next slide, um, you, you'll see that this is kind of our, so we started this program, which is called Beit al-Hikmah 2.0, uh, which is named after the House of Wisdom in Baghdad to make it culturally relevant to, to the audience. And we have hired a team of 120 people across the region, starting first in Iraq, but also across the region to um, constantly make sure that we make this content available, especially content on the subjects that I mentioned. We are a partner of Wikipedia, uh, Wikipedia Arabic, and also Wikipedia Kurdish. And, and we make sure that many of the articles related especially, for example, in, in the latest uh, events of COVID-19, most of the articles about COVID-19 in Arabic is done by our team and constantly updated to make sure that there is a citation and there is evidence and, 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 and all of that. So on that note, we start creating more video contents um, and, and, uh, and now we're experimenting with the concept of courses and, and easy quizzes in which people can uh, get examples of, of randomized uh, version of misinformation, see if they're able to identify it. After watching our video, we give them another randomized sample to see if they're able to differentiate and then measure 
pre and post um, of, of that content. And we have created that kind of a larger uh, series called the Critical Thinking Series uh, of short videos in Arabic uh, that, that kind of tackles kind of the basic of the most basic concepts from confirmation bias to, to logical fallacies to uh, importance of differentiating how to differentiate fact from fiction, how to avoid sensationalized titles. Um, when you read an article, you have to look what is the evidence that supports um, the, the argument that being presented. Uh, one of the and, and also show like important debates that are happening around the uh, Arab world and also the region as to how much, no matter how much you dislike the the leader or the authoritarian that 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 you're living under, you have to make sure that every claim that you make is factual because it can be used against you when you're spreading misinformation. So we so we want to show that regardless of what you feel about a certain situation, especially within the context of Wikipedia is that you have to have citation and evidence to support what you're doing. Our program is now, as we're moving towards to actually institutionalize this program in four universities across Iraq and hopefully after the year 2022, uh, in which we can expand more to the region. Um, and we have a, we're very online savvy. So all, uh, online is really our strength. Uh, so we have a following of 4.8 million. Um, and our content series, the critical thinking series, ha by now is roughly watched by 38 million. So we try to make sure that our content uh, is, is seen um, and, and, and also discussed and, and create as much engagement as possible. And as I said, now our next step for this year, for 2021, is that now we have kind of an idea of user consumption, what people are interested in. So we did a lot of A-B testing on our videos to see what actually creates the most engagement. Where, where arguments were being, how, how arguments are being uh, discussed, how people are engaging on the comment section, um, which I think is kind of very interesting uh, thing. And now we're moving to, to moving towards the quizzes and pre and post to measure if people have actually, as a result of seeing our content have shifted some behavior, they now have a more awareness of these tools, critical thinking tools and, and logical fallacies than before uh, being aware of our, concept, our content. So with that, uh, move it to Jenny.